Michelle Yeoh has finally married her longtime boyfriend, Jean Todd. And based off this photo and this announcement, a lot of people got a lot to say. Let's talk about it. Yeah, maybe surprisingly or unsurprisingly, this sparked a firestorm on all the Asian Instagram. Some people said this about Michelle Yeoh. Some people said that. Um, all I want to say is congratulations. Congratulations to her, Jean Todd, yeah. who I believe is the son of Polish Jewish immigrants to France. Obviously, Michelle Yeoh was a superstar in Hong Kong, has more recently become a superstar in the West, or like, you know, she always was known, but like really increased her profile a lot. All right, David, let's talk about why people are even talking about this photo. Why does anybody care that she married her 19 year long fiance? Yeah. Like, I just think that people need something in pop culture to open up a door to a more serious discussion. Anything that happens in pop culture, you know, some people overrate Hollywood this way, or some people underrate her, some people fairly rate it, whatever. But like, it just opens a door. Should it have been the incident to open that door? I don't know, but it did. And when I'm talking about the door, I'm talking about maybe the societal gender imbalances or mar out marriage rates, you know, between no, Asian women and about, Asian men. You're talking about the white man, Asian woman couple. Right. This is what this now. This is what a lot of people are using this as. I and, and that's what the discussion and arguments and even even devolved into name calling yeah. in the comment section. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting that Michelle Yeoh of all people, obviously. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're gonna get into the comment section. Please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys if you guys enjoy our commentary and the news that we cover. Yeah, I think that first off. Michelle Yeoh, first of all, she's been married to a Hong Kong billionaire before. Yeah. So she's been, totally been married to Asian guys before. I think Poon, yeah. Yeah, I think Sin Tsai, Yao Tin Tsai. And then uh, I think that, you know, it's just because she's the first Asian woman to ever win uh, the lead actress award at the Oscars. Yeah. And now she's marrying a white guy after 19 years. Even though, you know, we could get into the details of like, is he like a tall Chad or is he more like a short intellectual type dude? But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it just fits in with like, I guess like a macro pattern that people constantly argue about. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I, I think my thoughts are like, what if she married like a Richard Branson, like a really rich, cool white guy? Like, would people be more okay with it? Or is it because visually he's like shorter, he's not as good looking, he kind of looks like a gnome. I'm sure he's a nice guy and probably loves her because listen, at his age, and of that wealth, a lot of guys could be marrying and dabbling in younger you, women. You mean exactly like Richard Branson like, does? Yeah, Richard or, or Branson. Or Dan, Dan Bilzerian? Or Richard Branson is busy with like 30-year-old women versus 70-year-old women. You know, and John Todd probably loves Michelle Yeoh. So I guess I'm saying like, it, there's no like, I can't find any evidence of like self-hatred or anti-Asian guyness or anything like this around this situation in particular. Well, I do understand that happens and we should have a conversation about it. I just don't know if this right, is Right, you're one. saying that you don't know if this is the right key to open up that door, but there's a lot of valid discussions probably to be had in that door. Of course, we all know the statistics like brought up by uh, this guy named Brian Shu, this TikToker who talks about the stats about how kind of imbalance it is statistically speaking about interracial uh, marriages. White male, Asian female is improbably the most common interracial couple. They are a quarter of all interracial marriages. Despite Asian women being only 8% of married women, they almost outnumber Asian male, white female, white male, black female, black male, white female. White male, Asian female couples are statistically weird. But anyways, guys, let's get into the comments section because other people had a lot to say. Somebody said, oh my goodness, I'm just here for the comments. They're about to be a mess. Uh, I know the comments are about to be problematic, but I just can't help but lurk. This is sort of like the classic popcorn comments, right? Because they knew, Andrew, this is explosive. Um, somebody said, oh my gosh, some geriatric white man. Congrats, though. Somebody said, he, there's not even going to be a honeymoon unless there's a very potent blue pill. And not all these comments are from Asian guys, right? by the way. Some of these comments are from other white people. Somebody said he looks so old and feeble. He must also smell. I can't believe this Asian queen got with a guy who looks like this. <laughs> yo, when the person was like, yo, a geriatric white guy. Congrats, though. Yeah. Still congrating. Or, yeah. It's I mean, no, what do you think about this? Do you think that there that it's the looks gap? Because she's kind of sort of like upheld yeah. as this like you know she's she's very good looking well, she's an award-winning actress she was a model she was a beauty pageant girl earlier in her life she is considered very very beautiful especially for her age and then she's with a non-beautiful man but i just feel like at this age they're not having kids anymore you know i don't know like what their relationship is based on. Yeah. They're probably just two older people who found love. And, and I, you know, in a way, it's almost like him being a short king. And I believe he's like a, he's a Polish Jewish 
son of like Polish Jewish immigrants to France. I actually feel like his situation, it's almost like, it's hard to say that she's just going with a Chad, Brad, Cody, most dominant, super tall Anglo dude, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, it doesn't seem like, it just seems like to me, two old people. And then <laughs> one woman happens to be prettier. <laughs> yeah, somebody said, not every white plus Asian couple is a product of fetishization. I'm mm. literally mixed with parents like this. And I know that there's nothing but true love in between them. He waited 19 years for this woman. I doubt it was anything close to fetishization. Bro. Uh, this was a very moderate, ah. truthful comment. You know what I like about this comment? She's acknowledging that inside of it, like we always say, Andrew, inside of a reason pizza, there's just different slices. And I just do not think that Michelle, yo, Jean Todd thing falls into a problematic slice, but there are problematic slices possibly in that pizza. Dude, you're engaged for 19 years. First of all, I don't even know what them getting married means if they were like engaged for 19 years at that point. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of problematic things. First of all, I, I do think that, like I said, there's real problematic slices, but like the, that, that Anna Nicole Smith, you know, thing with the older rich oil billionaire from back in the day, that was problematic too, taking the race out of it. Right, yeah, because she, they clearly, what, did she, was she attracted right. to him? Somebody says, uh, seeing people getting upset at how she's not married to an Asian man really shows how internalized racism and generational trauma and prejudice still law lives strong in millennials. David, and this comment you, was left by a girl, to be honest. I, I had to look at her profile. I think she was like 21. Do you think there is generational trauma and prejudice more amongst the millennials than there are, would be, I guess, amongst Gen Z? Uh, okay, for sure... They're just from a different generation, right? Yeah. So they've seen different things. It's pre-internet. It's pre-iPhone. But uh, it, they're throwing a lot of terms out here. I'm not saying that I don't kind of get what they mean. But there's a, I feel like the devil's in the details. Yeah, dude. Because I, they're like, there's a way to have that discussion in that door that's problematic. And there's a way that's less problematic. But the problematic people are making even the reasonable people not want to have that discussion. Or maybe there is no discussion to be had because power is power and, and power levels are power levels. And also, Michelle, yo, this is not it. I'm more concerned with these like Gen Z TikTok Asian girls who are out dissing Asian dudes or something. Yeah. Like that to me is more like a little bit more questionable than what Michelle Yeoh is doing. Of course, Andrew, there was a lot of arguing between um, probably, you know, Asian guys and Asian girls that turned into name calling. Somebody said, listen, there's no, uh, no, nothing wrong with falling in love with whoever you want to fall in love with, but you have to take a look at the macro statistics and see that there's a gigantic gap. Somebody said, shut up and go to therapy. It'll make your insecure incel looking ass feel better thinking that than yes. Somebody said, uh, I'm guess oh you're calling me sexist but I'm you're dismissing the the trauma that Asian women grow up with so she's referring to the reasonings for this gap. Yeah, I feel like on both sides there's people being oversensitive about Michelle Yeoh. First mm. of all, you can marry whoever you want. Obviously if Michelle Yeoh has a history of hating on Asian men or speaking ill about Asians which she doesn't, and I'm just like then that then it, then it's not really an issue. But I think that also for the women to be replying back and 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 assuming that every man who ever brings up this conversation is like an incel, weak, insecure Asian man, right. I think is super wrong, and that's super counterproductive. Right. Super well, both, counter well, both people are being kind of toxic. Yeah. Right? Both, both people both are sides. being counterproductive. I mean, it's sort of like the toxic left and the toxic right right now politically. That's why nothing's getting done. It's all gridlock. Like, oh, you don't want to bring up who Asian women marry? You're a toxic, insecure Asian male. And so, I'm like, no, that's not necessarily true either. But yeah, no dude should be accusing women of anything right off the bat. Right, because every case is different. Everything is yeah. situational. And, you know, the details here, they shift to this case, that case. Somebody said, I don't understand how Asian men will praise other Asian men for getting a woman outside of their race, but will tear down an Asian woman who does the same. I'm not Asian, so please enlighten me. It just seems hypocritical. I mean... Uh, okay, here's my thing. I think tearing down Asian women for no reason, especially when the Asian woman has not done anything to Asian people, is wrong. Completely wrong. Um, and I do think the reason why there's the double standard, why you congratulate Asian men for dating outside, is because it's just simply statistically less probable, and it's considered more difficult. So just like I would congratulate Lana Condor if she married Timothy Chalamet, what do you, as an Asian guy, what am I going to say? I'd be like, oh, shoot, Lana Condor got with Timothy Chalamet. That's cool for her. 
You know, like that's like a hot top white guy. That's right. great, you know, because that that would be like, I guess, considered difficult. So, so in the same way, like an Asian dude who gets with like a good looking non-Asian woman, is just more difficult. Somebody said, wow, so many insecure Asian men in this thread. And uh, this turned into, you know, like we said, even more arguing, going back and forth. Uh, I definitely think here's an interesting concept, Andrew. Let me just posit this, okay? If your social positioning in the Western world is not secure, wouldn't you have a lot of logical reason to be insecure? I'm not saying that it would be right for your life or, you know, what you need to do and get done as a man. But if literally your positioning is super unsecured, like not secured by anything, it's not tied down by anything, wouldn't you logically be insecure? I think it is tougher for a lot of Asian men to feel secure. Now, part of that is in their head. Right. And obviously... But also part of it is the things that they've experienced. I think it is more difficult. And unfortunately, I do think that a lot of Asian guys have to bust more moves in order to feel more secure, whether that's travel around, they do this and that, they work out, they practice this. Unfortunately, that is the situation. And I well, just- Well, because you're just sort of like minus points off the yeah, rip. You're so just, you got to dig yourself out of that hole. Yeah, yeah, you have to spend a little time digging yourself out of the hole first. And that's the unfortunate truth for a lot of Asian guys. But I think that there's so much literature and conversation about it that what I wish is that a lot of Asian dudes would find the spaces where they can like work on themselves to right. do that. You know what I mean? Or figure things out. Yeah, now, I really recommend, I honestly, this is like a little bit of an aside, like just moving to an enclave for like, a lot yeah. for a just check it out hell yeah yeah somebody yeah. said uh he proposed less than two months after they met and then they engaged after 19 years what's going on here somebody said convenient timing waited for her to make it status wise to pop the question um for all the comments about why they brought the oscar to their wedding it maybe was an inside joke that they would get married when she finally won an oscar i actually think that this is true like that she was like waiting to make it uh, and I'm not saying that she was searching for validation from the Western world, but sort of like make it in the West. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's beyond to say that Michelle Yeoh cares about winning an Oscar, guys. I mean, yeah. yeah. I know she's a Western person. Like I heard she grew up speaking English with her parents in Malaysia because at that time, yeah. uh, Kuala Lumpur and Penang, there were such strong Br British colonies that you could actually like, it was almost like, you, you could just speak English with your parents, even, or you, maybe your grandparents. Someone said, uh, yikes, we need to stop putting her up on a pedestal of Asian representation. And then someone else said, oh, these pro-Asian female celebrities always be with white men on the down low. Yeah, I mean, I'll say this. I do think that we got to stop looking at people in Hollywood to just be the markers of anything. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's a very particular system. It's a great skill set to have. You have to be uh, above average looking to even enter I mean, that fishbowl to begin with. But uh, that that's one thing that definitely, I, I think in America, we generally look at Hollywood because we don't like follow that many other worlds or like, you know what I mean? I mean, some people do, some people don't. It depends on how ASEAN or mainstreamized you are, but you know what I mean? Yeah, but I think this actually comes to the conversation about like, do like, can you do a lot for a group of people? Can you impact that group of people while you still being different from them? It's kind of like having all these half Filipinos on the women's soccer team in the Philippines that they won their world first World Cup. It's like they're a half Filipino. They never grew up in the Philippines at all. Maybe a lot of them don't even speak Tagalog at all. But I'm saying, can they still represent and do a lot for the Philippines as a country? I think given the situation, you have to look at it and say, you know, uh whatever you think is like right or wrong, what is the reality of this situation? What is progress from yeah. this realistic point, right? Yeah, and I think Michelle Yeoh has done a lot for Asians in media, yeah. regardless if she's like with an Asian guy right, right same now. Same with Gemma Chan or whoever, yeah. right? Um, somebody said, uh, this is actually a Hapa guy I believe his mom is Asian, his dad is white, but he identifies as Asian. This guy said, interracial dating is fine. He's a product of it himself, but the ratio is definitely skewed. Mm, and no. you know what's always interesting is the guys that are Hapa sort of speaking up on behalf of Asian guys. Do you think that th their comments are taken differently than a full Asian guy saying it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that... Um yeah, I, th I think it's important for people to just point out the stats. I mean, listen, once you have the stats, how can you argue with the stats? You just have to have a conversation about it. To me, there's definitely a worthy conversation to have, but I just know that a lot of dudes in the comment section, they kind of ruin that conversation by starting off being very, very bitter and emotional right yeah. off the bat. But I'm telling you guys, we can have a lot of these conversations if we're not so emotional about it. But if people get 
inevitably toxic defending either side, can you have the discussion? I, I think that it'll there, just well, move there, on there to the next story. There needs to be a more higher quality discussion with like more, I guess, uh, good faith actors. Somebody said, uh, if Asian men are labeled as the undesirable, toxic, unattractive, if Asian women claim they support POC or pro-Asian despite dating white men, and then comparatively put down Asian men based on their own daddy issues while ignoring that the ish Asian men had to deal with it from the exact same type of parents, then uh, what if the roles were switched around like they are in uh, somewhat they are in the black American community, then what would Asian women say? Right, they're just saying, yeah, because, uh, what is this comment saying? Well, basically it was saying like, if the, you know, it's kind of all over the place. People are dumping their emotions and their feelings, Uh but this guy was basically saying like, what if just the roles were flipped? How would you guys like that, huh? You guys wouldn't like that very much because obviously he was referring to, in I guess in the black American community, black males statistically have a much higher out marriage rate than the women. Yes. Yeah, so he's just like asking that question. Oh, yeah. I, yeah mean, I mean, of course, you could always yeah flip flip the role role reversal, man. It's, right. Uh, always right. Yeah. Anyway, let's just get into our takeaways, Andrew. This discussion goes on forever. It, it weaves into mm-hmm. uh, so many derivatives that are not fully relevant to Michelle Yeoh getting married to Jean Todd. But uh, why why do you think it is, man? It's just like every opportunity that this discussion gets brought up by this thing, whether it fits or not, it's just shooting that gap. Yeah. Not every white male asian female couple uh does this apply to and is there a conversation to have about it um but yeah of course guys the stats are there watch brian's video brian shoes video i think it would be different if he was a tall british guy to be honest because malaysia was a british colony and then you could be like you could draw some colonial geopolitical things but uh, like a polish jewish refugee to france i don't know 19 years man i think they love each other man it's just love at that point plus she did marry a Hong Kong dude before this. So you can't say she doesn't like Asian men or that she never liked Asian men. It just didn't work out in the long term. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Do you think that there's going to be a just, I guess, is this discussion ever going to get into a quality range? Yeah. I mean, I almost feel like there is more discussion because he's this guy, John, John Todd, is not good looking. Right. Like, I almost feel like if he was good looking, maybe more people would understand. You think, you think so? I almost, to me, and I'm not saying that, you you might be right in terms of the majority of people. I almost want to say what happened with like Mona Locke divorcing Gary Locke and going with like a super tall white, you know, Chad was almost like, you could argue that was more, so what I don't she, know, rattling. What if to, she to went something. with like a short white guy, like that wasn't as good looking? Would it seem less fetish, right? Yeah, it would seem less like but then conventional you, but, Hollywood SMV so, power so, so, metrics, I don't know. And this is a larger conversation. Let us know in the comments down below. But I guess if they're short and not good looking white guys, then does that mean she married them more for being white? Or if they're tall and good looking and they happen to be white, it's almost like, aren't they just tall and good looking at that point? It depends on how nerdy. I don't know. They, I think it, de- it might depend on how nerdy they are. How okay. I don't know. Guys, now see, this is a, this <laughs> a tough conversation, guys. Uh, anyways, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, shout out to Michelle Yeoh. Uh, she's, got, she's in a whole bunch of movies coming up still. She's working very hard. She is, uh, I guess, the Asian queen, like Asian actress queen, I would say. Right, right. right. Well, anyway, man, congratulations to everybody. It's a, it's a discussion, man. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. Keep it civil in the comment section. I'm serious. Till next time, we out. Peace. Peace.